Amniotic fluid plays a very important part in a baby's development in the womb. For one, a baby doesn't breathe inside of the womb, meaning they don't breathe oxygen because they get oxygen nutrients through the, uh, the placenta and umbilical cord, but they do practice breathing motions. And so when you do an ultrasound, you can actually see a baby inhaling, and what they're inhaling is the fluid, and it's actually an important part of lung development. It also helps with the development of their limbs and adds as a cushion around the umbilical cord when a mother having contractions. So um, it serves lots of different purposes and there needs to be a proper amount of fluid around the baby. And if there's too much or too little, it's a little concerning and a doctor will investigate um, causes behind it and determine if intervention is warranted. Too much fluid is called polyhydramnios. Too little fluid is called oligohydramnios. And the fluid level can actually be measured on ultrasound. So um, you had a specific question about oligohydramnios and what can cause it. There are so many different things. Um, let's start with this. If you drink less, you pee less, right? And the main component of amniotic fluid is fetal urine. So if there's less fluid around the baby, then there might be an issue with blood flow to the baby. And so things that may cause this would be preeclampsia, uh, maybe maternal hypertension, maternal nephropathy, thrombophilia or blood clotting disorders, uh, placental insufficiency, meaning the, the placenta just isn't perfusing like it should, a placental abruption, overdue pregnancies, like when you're over your due date and approaching 41 weeks gestation, certain medications can also cause it, and fetal chromosomal abnormalities can also contribute to it. So if you have low fluid, talk with your doctor and they'll be able to tell you what they think the cause is in your circumstances. As for what's done for low fluid, it kind of depends on where exactly the fluid is at and at what point you are in your pregnancy. Sometimes it can just be monitored and then once you reach a certain gestational age or the fluid level reaches a certain point, then sometimes in, uh, induction is warranted. Now, um, you also wanted to know if you had it in past pregnancies, if you're going to have it in future pregnancies. And as you can tell, many of the causes of low fluid are not modifiable, meaning there's really nothing that you can do about it. And a lot of the times it is circumstantial, so it may or may not happen again. But there are some things that you may be able to control, like maternal hypertension, for example. That's a condition that could cause low fluid in pregnancy that, if well managed before you get pregnant, um, may not be a problem in future pregnancies. So for this reason, it's always good to have a preconception appointment, talk with your doctor about your health history and current circumstances, and they'll determine if anything needs to be managed um, before you get pregnant again so that you can have the best outcome possible. If you have more questions in the future for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Intermountain Moms and recommend us to your friends and family too.